Hey guys, it's Terry from Smooth Watch up here and coming at you with yet another inbox review. Another wee bite from my stash. Um, this time it is uh, Tamiya's Yamaha YZR M105, uh, Rossi's bike number 46. And um, 112 scale as usual. Uh, this particular one uh, comes with cartograph decals. And I'm also going to, because I've got it, uh, review the little uh, detail up parts uh, kit for the front fork set, which is uh, something that you can buy as a, an additional part. Um, as I say, the kit number is 14116. Um, it came out in 2011, um, and it is basically what all the YZR M109s are based on. Um, 2011, they retooled it and did the uh, YZR M109 Fiat Yamaha Team 1, which I do have my stash, but I don't have it to hand. And then they did a couple of anniversary editions uh, with new decals. And in 2013, they put some new parts on it. So this is basically what the YZR M109 was based on. Um, now... This is currently not in production. Tammy has seemed to do um, what we call limited edition runs on a lot of these kits, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. Um, there's a lot of detail up kit for this. Um, Hobby Design do a lot of stuff for it. Um, I'm just trying to see what else. Yeah, Hobby Design, uh, Spot Models and all that do, do stuff for it. The only one I've been able to find um, was on um, the eBay's around uh, about £30 kit. So, as I say, it's uh, kind of based, or the original uh, predecessor to the, excuse me, just pull me those, YZR M109. Now, I'll take these out of the way. Right, you'll notice that uh, the livery on this has go written on it. Now, um, obviously, because of the ban on cigarette advertising and stuff like that, originally this bike would have had the, the French cigarette manufacturer Glosses. I think that's the right way you spell it, Glosses or say it. So, that's the front box art. Um, Cartograph decals, 46 and number 5. Um, obviously, the, the two types of side fairing. Nice little bike. Let's have a look what's on the side there. So this is Valentino Rossi's one. Uh, YZR M1. Okay. Um, on the end, it just tells you it's uh, part number 116. And this side, uh, it's Colin Edwards, I believe. C. Edwards. Um, I'm not a big follower of all the, the MotoGP, so apologies if I've got that wrong. And yeah... That is the kit. Okay. So we're going to take a little look inside the box. So bear with me. Apologies. I'll just take the, the lid off here. And I'll pan my camera down. Oh, ding, crash, wallop. Okay. So now, um, I was on about the decals that you can get. I got these aftermarket ones. Um, I'm just having a little, see if I can get the... Try to see if I can get the edge of this whilst I'm uh, videoing. It's quite quite difficult. Now, I actually have a little figure, um, but it's for the, the 2004. I was going to do the 2004 one. Um, you can get a little Valentino Rossi figure. Um, so these are the decals for the Rossi figure, 2004-2005. Uh, and I do happen to have one. Oh, excuse me. I'm knocking stuff everywhere. I've got a resin figure of, of Rossi. Um, so these are the decals that you can get. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of crease in that one. I don't know how that's happened. Um, but I'm going to scan these in anyway. Um, the glosses uh, decals instead of putting the go ones on. So that is what my intentions are. Um, I was thinking of doing the 2004 bike. Mm, haven't got a 2004 bike. But apparently the 2005 is the same. Um, oh, oh, God. I should have been better prepared. Yeah, as usual, the smooth is um, a 
apologies for all sticky shiny is, is trying to redo stuff so I do actually have a resin figure for this bike um, no plans to build it as yet so I'll just stick that off to the side um, so we're going to have a quick look at what's in the box so I'm just going to take all this out um, so there's all the sprues and the usual Tamiya uh, bag of stuff and the inside it it's sort of advertising some of their car kits um, more car kits in there some of their bike series I haven't seen that one actually uh, Team Honda Pons RC 211V haven't seen that one uh, a couple of different bikes in there and a couple of Formula 1 cars so that's what's on the inside along with a load of usual bump so that's this particular kit, so let's move some of this off to the side. Which side will I move it to? Let's move it to this side. Apologies. Chairs creaking, it's not my back. Not yet anyway. <laughs> right, so um, in the box you get a, this is quite nice actually, this is the, the decal call out. Um, Obviously for Colin Edwards and Valentino Rossi, which gives you all the, the decal placements for the standard uh, markings. Obviously I'll be putting the glosses on it. It does tell you about the front fork set, which I'll go into in a bit, um, which is Tamiya's part number 12613. So that's just basically a, a nice little colour um, sheet, so you can either do Rossi or, or Colin Edwards. Um, I'll put that off to the side. Um, decals. They say they're cartograph, so I'm just going to pop these out here. You will come out. Um, I got this off at of eBay, so we have some lovely printed, and these are cartograph. Uh, a little bit of carbon fibre there. Um, speedo. See if we can get the Quite hard to catch it in the light of speedo. Uh, carbon fibre for, does that, is that, I don't know where that goes. Uh, the 46 for Rossi. Um, all the go instead of glosses. And uh, yeah, very clear, the wee Michelin man. Decals are lovely. Um, you also get, I'm just trying to get this out of here. You also get a couple of... Uh, tire decals it looks like and the um, metal um, sort of foil uh, Yamaha logos on there as well yeah Michelin tire decals um, on there we all know how much fun those are to put on so I'm just gonna put them back in the bag bear with me as I say this is uh, most of these uh, inbox reviews are kits I've got in my stash that I will be building at some point but uh, it's just nice to let you guys see, even if it is what I would call a retro kit or a limited production kit or a kit that's no longer in production, um, just to let you guys see what's actually in the box. So if you come across one, um, you know what to expect. But uh, <coughs> apologies about that. I'm just trying to get everything back to... There we go. So that's the decals. Right, instruction sheet, black and white. Uh, standard Tammy layout. Gives you all the colour callouts in the first page. Uh, and as usual, it starts with the engine. Um, moves on to the frame. Headstock. Uh, more engine stuff. Airbox. These aren't difficult kits. Uh, what we're getting onto there, the, the tail section. Uh, exhaust. Tail section onto the bike, exhaust onto the bike, um, front radiator, uh, what have we got there, rear suspension. Um, it, although you can get the spring comes with a detail upset, it's not working um, suspension. Uh, rear swing arm, chain, uh, rear wheel mudguard going in, all that sort of stuff. Um, onto this one, and then we're going on to building up front fork legs. Rear wheel. It's one of these ones that just folds out in one big one. Um, unfortunately, front mudguard appears to be in two parts, so you've got a seam line to deal with. 
Uh, and we've got all the ancillary parts going on. There is a paddock stand with it. Uh, this is all the cable routing. Important point to note on all Tammy instructions, uh, where it gives you the vinyl tubing for all the brake lines, even though some guys might say they're not in scale. If you're going to go with the, the brake lines that come with the kit, all of these dimensions that are actually on the instruction sheet are to scale. So where it says E, 12 millimetres, that is actually 12 millimetres, and D is 28 millimetres, so you can actually lay your hose on there and cut them to size. Um, this is just... Again, the tank and all that's in two parts, so you've got a seam line to deal with. Uh, side cowlings. Getting into the final parts where you're putting all the, what we call the tins on. Um, pretty straightforward and, and standard uh, Tamiya instructions. So let's grab the first sprue. Now, as I say, I bought this. I haven't opened it. Um, Tamiya bags... As always, come with staples in, which some people don't like. I actually do like the fact that they put staples in. Um, let me just open this up. I'm just taking the staples out. So I've had this in my stash for, oh, a good while now. Um, let's have a look at the first sprue. Okay, so the first one is sprue A, funnily enough. Um, let's see if we can get a, a bit of a clearer shot on this. So let's just move the camera down. Um, we have in this particular sprue, we have the frame, uh, the frame halves. It's, it's, they call it the delta box, so the, the engine is suspended from it, which is quite good. It means you can paint all the engine up and then put it into the frame. Um, what else? This is one part of the paddock stand, second part of the paddock stand. This looks like the rear um, the rear sort of mudguard type thing. Uh, both the wheels, um, headstock parts, oops, getting shot, headstock parts, uh, handlebar grips, um, the chain and sprocket. Now what's quite interesting in this one, it's nicely detailed, but there is a little split in it, which means that you, could, uh, you obviously got a Hook it round. Um, this again looks like part of the underseat mudguard. You've got caliper parts, calipers with um, quite nicely on it. You've got Brembo on them, so you might be able to pick them out and highlight them. Uh, this is a rear set with it looks like a gear lever on it. Um, part of the suspension, lots of other little bits and bobs. So it's all really, really crisp. It's beautifully made. It's one of the more modern Tamiya kits. So, beautifully made. Let's go on to the next sprue. Apologies for my um, chair cooking. So, we're on it. Now, there's a little bit tagged on here. In a little bag. And this is the front. Let's get this staple away out of the way. This is the front uh, fairing or nose cone. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, so let's get a little look at the nose cone because that's in a separate bag that was stapled to that one. So here we go. So we've got a lovely, uh, it's the soft white plastic that Tammy I use, so it's very easily marked. Uh, there's some nice fine detail on there of um, the little rivets or the little stud fasteners that hold the screen on. There are a couple of seam lines down it though. Uh, just try to catch the light, see if you can. See them? A couple of wee seam lines to be addressed. Beautifully moulded. Um, and it looks like it's screwed on to the front there because uh, Tamiya uh, do quite a lot of uh, screwing together of the parts. So everything's looking pretty nice with that. So I'm just going to put that back in the bag. Obviously, I'm not building this just now. It's just something I've pulled out of the stash to let you guys see. And we have this big bag of sort of silvery grey metallic parts which I would assume would be the engine and the rear parts of the frame so let's just get the staples out and pull the spray out and in there actually is some clear parts Ooh. and what I do like about Tamiya is they put their clear parts in a separate bag and the only clear part on this I'm not going to take this out of the bag is the front um, 
nose cone or cowling or what you want to call the front fairing screen. It has lovely optical clarity on it. It is slightly thick or overscale. I know you can get aftermarket screens that are vacuformed that are a bit thinner, but it's not bad. Uh, it is a little bit overscale though. So if you're going for absolute accuracy, if that is your thing, then you might want to consider um, one of the, the vacuform uh, type aftermarket screens. Um, you can get them from Hero Boy and such like. But the actual screen that comes with the kit is very, very nice indeed. Right, on to this actual sprue. So what have we got on here? Right, this might glare out the camera a little bit. So we're looking up on the left hand side here. Some sort of piping. Uh, again, piping, frame parts. Um, although it looks kind of marbled, this is the front uh, radiator and oil cooler assembly. Um, as always with Tamiya, all the ejector pin marks are on the rear. Um, now, quite interestingly on this one, which might make it a bit easier to paint, you've got the front disc rotors or the front uh, brake discs, as I call them. Now, on these bikes, they are, um, I believe they're carbon fibre. Um, so you've got the, the two front discs in carbon fibre, and then you've got the centre uh, hub parts for the front discs. So you can paint those separately and then attach them to the, the carbon fibre ones. Uh, got a water pump there, various suspension parts. Um, this looks like hmm, another part of the frame. Okay, again, you've got marbling on it, but they haven't chromed it or anything like that. So you've got uh, frame parts on here, rear brake disc. This is quite interesting. This actually looks like the rear, the rear mudguard. I'm wondering if they're doubling up in parts. Right, there's a sump. I haven't looked at the instructions. There's the rocker covers, camshaft covers, uh, side casing. Um, then you've got the main part of the block there. Uh, front part, is that front? That's the rear part of the block where all the fuel injection goes in. You've got one of the exhausts there, front pipes, exhausts. Um, front part of the block where the exhausts go into. Uh, fuel cap, that looks like another side casing. Lots of wee bits and bobs. You've got... Standard front forks that come with it, which aren't too bad. You, you do have a little seam line address, but it's, it's not bad. And, uh, yeah, so that's they're calling that sprue jai. So I'm just going to move that off to the side and get the last sprue out. Um, so this is the last sprue, which is most of the tins, as I call them, uh, or the body panels. Uh, bear with me whilst I take these little staples out. So it's looking a really, really well-made kit, which is um, pretty much par for a lot of the more modern um, Tamiya bike kits. This is what I would call a sort of mid-range to high, high-end kit. So again, we're into this soft, soft white plastic, but it is beautifully moulded. There's not an ounce of flash on any of this. Um, so we've got the top of the, excuse me, hiccups, top of the airbox there. Um, this looks like one of the rear hangers. The rear, um, behind the seat pod, where all the camera and everything sits. Again, it's lovely, beautifully crisp. Any, uh, ejector pin marks are on the inside edges. Um, this is a rear seat pad, which sits onto that. Again, Beautifully moulded, beautifully crisp. Um, this is actual seat pad itself. This is one of the side panels. Um, one of the side tank panels with the airbox and all that underneath it. Beautifully detailed. Another side panel. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is a side fairing part. There is a little bit of sinkage in parts that but, I mean, you're going to wet and dry it anyway. Uh, just watch, obviously, these little fasteners um, that you don't get those flattened off. Tiny little bit of rough edge and, and that on the on, the, on one of the, the side uh, fairing panels, but nothing you can't deal with. 
Now this one's beautiful. And again, you've got the, the other. This looks, it's actually belly pan. These two are the belly pans. Uh, belly pan, beautifully, again, beautifully molded. Um, front mudguard, two halves. I wish you wouldn't do it that way. You can maybe see a wee bit of sinkage in there. Ah, but nothing that a wee bit of sanding can't deal with. And that's uh, the front V of the, uh, when you've got the belly pan. So, absolutely beautifully molded. Be careful when you're sanding these. The white plastic is very, very soft. So, go in with a really fine grip. Right. You can get a detail upset. Um, this is uh, 12613. It hasn't been opened yet. So, let's see if I can. Where's my knife? Let's see if I can show you what's in one of these. Now, the prices on these vary. Um, I got mine from Japan for about £12. But you can pay up to £26 for one of these uh, front fork detail upsets. And if you're paying £26 for one, myself personally, it's not worth it. If you can get them for about 12 quid, aye. So... Here's the instructions that you get with it. It's obviously got some detail up for the uh, the top of the fork stanchions where you, you dial in the preload and everything. Um, whole front fork assembly. Uh, again, whole front fork assembly and the steering damper. And that's basically the size of it. So let's have a little look at what you get. Let's take the staples out on this. Can I get the staples out? Let's see. See if I can get the staples out in this one. As soon as I actually have the fork detail upset on this, I thought I might as well show you it uh, along with the kit because if you're buying a kit like this, you might be um, considering uh, getting some detail up for it. So let me just take these staples out. You will comply. So what do you actually get for your... If you pay the book price, the £26. So it's saying, uh, steering damper, inner shaft, screw, pre-painted spring, which is for the rear shock, front fork unit, steering damper parts, and an axle block. So let's see what those actually are. Uh, God, I tell you what, they have them well packed. I'll give them that. Just bear with me whilst I pull this apart. So we have a small sprue. Um, which is styrene, um, which has the front uh, lower fork parts uh, that the calipers go on, uh, both halves of the steering damper, and this looks like uh, another bracket for the steering damper. Okay, you have um, a couple of screws in there, uh, one pre-painted yellow spring, so you get the spring anyway in the kit, uh, I haven't actually done the, the bag of goodies yet, but there's there's a black spring that you get in the kit, so it just saves you painting the spring. Um, the steering damper rod itself, which goes in between the, the plastic parts, is metal. Um, so obviously when you're turning the steering, it, it works better, and there's a couple of little screws in there. We have a couple of... Oh, a couple of... What I would say was uh, anodized aluminium uh, turned um, upper fork stanchions um, in a sort of brass colour. Okay. And then for the lower parts, um, which is actually the, the tubes itself, we've got them in an anodized gold. So you don't have to bother with all the painting in that if you get one of these. Um... Is it? And then there's two little, um, tiny little, let's see if I can get get the detail on there. I'll let you see whether it's worth buying or not. A couple of little turned brass parts that sit on top of the forks. Um, just for a bit more detail. Um, that's on top of the steering yoke. Myself, personally, 26 quid, not worth it. Uh, if you can get it for about 12 quid for Japan, absolutely worth it. So, yeah, that's been um, a quick inbox review. Oh, oh, I can't get it out now. 
quick inbox review of this kit. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as I say, the, the, the YZRM109 is kind of based on this with a few extra parts. And also to let you see what the little uh, detail upset that you can get for it is, is like to see whether it's worth spending your hard-earned cash on. So I hope you found that useful. As always, enjoy your hobby. Uh, Terry from Smooth Workshop here. Um, if you'd like to, you don't have to, uh, feel free to support me on my Patreon. I'll just pop up the, the little link there. Um, and uh, yeah, happy modelling. And until the next um, video or inbox review or, or tool review or whatever, look after yourselves, enjoy your hobby and happy modelling. Bye.